Hi, in this series, we'll be looking into the flexural design of reinforced concrete beams. But before we do that, let's do a bit of recap of ultimate strain design method. We know that the structure can be subjected to different kinds of load, for example, dead load, live load, or other accidental loads, for example, earthquake loads, or wind load, or snow load. Dead loads are basically the permanent load that acts on a structure and they do not change significantly with time. The self weight of the structure, for example, can be considered as a dead load. Uh, for uh, If it is a reinforced concrete beam, the weight of the reinforced concrete beam itself is the dead load. And if it is steel um, column, it, again, the weight of the steel column itself needs to be in, in, taken into account in the design and that's the dead load of the structure. And it also includes the weight of the materials that are permanently incorporated into the structure. For example, the weight of the partition walls has to be included as a dead load. In Australian Standard 1170.1 um, gives more detailed information about the dead load that you have to take into account for different materials. On the other hand, live load is the, is the load that acts on the structure and can change with time. It constitutes sustained loading due to day-to-day -day use of the structure. For example, uh, the furniture in the office building that are considered as a live load and or the li live load can be a variable lo live load as well. For example, the cars, the weight of the cars in the car park or the, um, the audience in the auditorium, they are all the live loads acting on the structure. Australian Standard 1170.1 gives detail about the live load that you need to consider for different structure. For example, for office uh, space, what are the live load that we need to consider? The details are given in AS 1170.1. Apart from dead load and live load, your structure can be subjected to uh, different other loads like earthquake loads, wind load and snow load as well. Now, if you look into the load displacement curve of a structure, you will see something like this one. So if you apply a load on a structure, initially the structure will behave linearly. And if it is a reinforced concrete beam at certain load, the structure, the, the beam will start to crack. And after cracking, the, the beam will behave non-linearly. And at certain load, the the structure will start to yield and if we still keep on increasing the load the structure will finally fail the ultimate limit state here concerns with the failure of the structure it can be a flexural failure it can be shear failure or it can be actual uh, tension or compression failure as well so all of these failure conditions are taken into account ultimate limit state when you are designing a structure we have to make sure that the structure doesn't go into the ultimate limit state. It doesn't fail in any of these forms. On the other hand, the serviceable limit state deals with the day-to-day -day use of the structure, the performance of the structure during its service life. Uh, for example, during its service life, the structure shouldn't have any excessive cracks or it shouldn't have any excessive dis displacement, deformations or vibrations as well so they are considered as a serviceable limit states so when you are designing a structure your structure has to meet the serviceable limit state as well as the ultimate limit state as well so the reinforced um, uh, the the concrete um, code as 3600 follows the ultimate design strain design method and the main equation of ultimate strain design equation is as shown here. So basically on the left hand side, phi ru, it is the design capacity of the member, has to be greater than or at least equal to the design action effect denoted by a star. So the left hand side, phi ru, the design capacity is calculated by multiplying the nominal strength ru by the strain reduction factor of phi. Nominal strength of the member is calculated based on the section, given section of, uh, of the member and the materials that you are using in there. And then you multiply it with the, with the strain reduction factor of phi, which is less than one. 
we use the strength reduction factor to take into account the variability in the materials, workmanship, and the assumption that we make in the design process. So all of this variability are taken into account by the phi factor. So we are reducing the nominal strength uh, of the member to take all those variability into account. This design capacity phi RU has to be greater than or at least equal to the design action effect S star. The design action effects are calculated by um, taking into account the various combinations of the dead load, live load and any other loads that can act on the structure. So when you're calculating the design action effect, you have to use the factored load, which takes into account the combination of the dead load, live load and any other loads as well. And also we use the load factor to multiply these dead loads and live load. The load factors are used to, to simulate the ultimate loading scenario so that there is, uh, we take into account the variability or increasing the load that can happen on the structure as well. So the load factors are intended to ensure that adequate safety against increasing the load is provided in the structure. So the Australian Standard 1170.0 takes these load combination into account. So when you are designing a structure, you have to take these load uh, load combination into account depending on what kind of structure you are making, whether there is earthquake or not. Uh, if there is earthquake or wind uh, that you have to take into account, these further load combinations that you have to use as well. And in this load combination, as you can see, this JIL and JIC uh, de designates the long-term um, load factor and the combination load factors as well so for example when there is a extreme wind event and the live load is occurring so there is it's very unlikely that the wind is occurring at the same time the extreme um, live load is also occurring that's why we use the combination factor which is less than one to to take into account that it's very unlikely that the wind load and the extreme live load will act at the same time so once you calculate the factor load then you calculate the design action effect based on the, on the, the critical factor load. AS uh, 1170.1 table 4.1 gives you the short term, long term and uh, the combination factor for different uh, structures. And as I said before, to calculate the design capacity of the structure, we multiply the ultimate or the nominal capacity by strength reduction factor phi. Strong strength reduction factor phi are taken into account to allow for the approximation that we use in the calculations of the capacity, as well as the variation in the materials, workmanship, and also the dimensions from the drawing to the field. So there can be a differences between what is on the drawing and what is on the field. So to take that variability into account, we take phi factor, which is less than one. And for the reinforced concrete structure, AS 3600 gives uh, table 2.2.2, which gives the phi factor for different structure members. For example, for axial force without bending, phi factors uh, are given here. Whereas for bending or members, uh, for class N reinforcement, it is uh, phi factor varies from 0.865 to 0.85. Here, the class N denotes the normal ductility uh, steel if we are using it varies a point from 0 0.65 to 0.85 but if we are using a low ductility steel class L steel um, phi factor has to be taken as 0 0.65 similarly uh, for shear we take the phi factor as 0 0.75 so we use these uh, phi factors when we are design when we are finding the design capacity of the member